I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. We can't expect God to do all the work. In the post-apocalypse, the only people who can survive are a special breed of men. Those who are driven by forces such as fear, revenge, and faith. Legends tell of the burned man, a man who was baptized in flames and grew from the ashes as God's mightiest warrior. The burned man is Joshua Graham. Joshua Graham was born in New Canaan, a Mormon settlement that was founded in the remains of Ogden, Utah. His upbringing was peaceful. From an early age, he displayed a natural aptitude for his studies. He studied to become a Mormon missionary and translator, and in 2246, he found his first calling. The wasteland of Utah was populated with various scattered tribes at the time. Joshua was familiar with most of their dialects, so he was the best one to spread the word of God. His vast knowledge of different languages proved very useful, and he soon came across Bill Calhoun and Edward Salo. These two men were members of the Followers of the Apocalypse, a humanitarian group that provides free medical treatment and education to settlers of the wasteland. Ed and Bill were on an expedition to the Grand Canyon to give aid to the tribes of the area. The three men shared a common goal, so Joshua decided to tag along with them and act as their translator. When they finally made it to their destination, they encountered the Blackfoot tribe. Graham attempted to communicate with them and inform them of their intentions, but it didn't go as planned. The tribe interpreted their actions as hostile and captured the party and took them as prisoners. As you can imagine, this worried the men. While they were prisoners, they began to observe the very tribe that was holding them captive. The Blackfoot tribe was a pathetic excuse for a tribe. They were weak and unorganized, nothing more than boys playing with spears. To make it all worse, they were at war with the seven neighboring tribes and it was not going in their favor. All three of the men saw this, but Edward especially took notice. Now Edward was a very educated man. When he was a young boy, he would read everything he could about the old world, but he took a special interest in war. He had studied military tactics and was very well versed in combat. He knew the tribe was doomed unless they had a strong leader, so he stepped up. With the help of Joshua, he taught the tribe how to maintain their weapons, improve their accuracy, and even how to make improved explosive devices. Bill heavily objected to this, but Edward made it clear they would have no choice. The Blackfoot had took them as prisoners, but the other tribes wouldn't afford him this luxury. Edward proved to be such a good leader that the tribe made him their acting war chief. When Edward was sure his men were ready, it was time for battle. Their first target was the Ridger tribe, the weakest of the seven. The attack was vicious. It was evident that Edward and his men were going to win. When the Ridger tribe refused to surrender, Edward ordered every man, woman, and child to be executed. Bill and Joshua were shocked at this, but figured it was their only way to make it out of the canyon. The Blackfoot tribe soon began making their way through the canyon, destroying every tribe they came across. This once weak tribe was now the most capable fighting force in the wasteland. This tribe is what would become the Legion. Life with the Legion was a major change for Joshua, but is one he adjusted to well. There was no room for weakness or mercy in this newly formed alliance. Edward, or Kaiser as he's known now, made Graham his second in command. For the next 30 years, the Legion would spread through the West like wildfire. The Legion went from one of many tribes to a powerhouse of a nation. Throughout these years, word of Joshua Graham also spread. Legion soldiers reported on his overwhelming brutality and seemingly lack of remorse for his horrible actions he'd done. Even NCR Rangers, some of the best trained soldiers in the wasteland, couldn't bring him down. If the mighty Kaiser was the brains of the Legion, Graham was the brawn. As the Legion pushed more and more west, they would soon make their worst mistake ever. This mistake was the Battle of Hoover Dam. The first Battle of Hoover Dam, to put it blunt, was a slaughter. Joshua, the man responsible for leading the attack, had grossly overestimated his own leadership prowess while also underestimating NCR forces. The NCR had essentially set up a trap 
and Graham led his men right into it. The Legion suffered heavy casualties that day, but Joshua managed to escape with his life. While this may have seemed like a blessing at first, it soon turned out to be a curse. When Graham returned to Kaisar with news of their defeat, he was furious. This type of failure was unacceptable, and there would have to be a punishment for it. As punishment for his failure, Joshua Graham was covered in pitch, set on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. His death was meant to serve as an example that even at the highest ranks, failure was not an option. However, something unexpected happened, something that should have been impossible. Joshua Graham lived. As to how he survived, I'll let the man himself explain it. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. The flame burned on and on. Joshua Graham woke up the following day and while physically he was broken, mentally he was stronger than ever. Everything happens for a reason. For the past 30 years, Joshua had lived a life of sin. He had put aside the will of God in favor of his own selfish desires, but that was no more. He intended on devoting his life to the Lord once again, but first, he had to get back home. With multiple broken bones and severe burns to the majority of his body, Joshua began crawling, trying to make his way out of the canyon. When he finally made it out of the Grand Canyon, he began the 400 mile journey back to New Canaan. It took three long months, but he finally made it back home. The people of New Canaan welcomed Joshua with open arms. Their prodigal son had finally returned. The new Joshua Graham was much different than the old version of himself. His body was covered in bandages that he had to change daily. Due to years of mistreatment of his body, pain medications had no effect on him. He was forced to live with the pain, so he learned to embrace it. Most importantly, all of his pride and vanity were gone. When he was a child, he was baptized in holy water in New Canaan. As an adult, he was baptized in the burning fire that nearly killed him. Joshua was content with his new life in New Canaan, but whispers of his survival eventually made its way back to the Legion. When word got back to Kaisar, he was furious. These were nothing more than rumors. He had seen Graham fall to his death. If any Legion soldier so much as said his name aloud, they would be put to death. Despite this dismissive demeanor, deep down, Kaisar was afraid. There were few men he could think of more dangerous than Graham, so he secretly sent out Legion assassins to find and kill him. As word of Joshua Graham died, the legend of the burned man was born. Graham was living a relatively normal life in peace, surrounded by friends and family in New Canaan. That was until one fateful day in 2281. While Graham was away on a mission trip, the White Leg tribe attacked the city, hoping to gain favor from Kaisar and join the Legion. Joshua returned to his home absolutely destroyed, and many of his friends and family dead. He managed to lead a small group of survivors into Zion Canyon, County, where they came across the tribes of the area, the dead horses and the sorrows. Fearing the White Legs would push further into Zion, Graham was made acting war chief of the dead horses. One of his fellow New Canaanites, Daniel, took over leadership of the Sorrow tribe. Daniel wants nothing more than to peacefully lead the tribes out of the canyon, whereas Joshua, he wants to prepare for war. And that's where we meet Joshua Graham during the Honest Hearts expansion. The player can choose the side of Joshua Graham and prepare the tribes for war, Daniel, and try to peacefully leave, or you can choose pure chaos and bring them both down. The choice is up to the player. How do you feel about Joshua Graham? Is he one of the best characters in the whole entire series, or is he just overrated? Personally, I love everything about Joshua Graham. He's one of my favorite Fallout characters of all time. If you liked the video, liking and subscribing really helps the channel out a lot. I think that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.